of Shavuot Tov, I didn't really expect it to be a full-fledged Sikha on the application, so... Uh, sure, sure. Plus, I was still 10 minutes, so... Uh, it's good, it's good. It's a capstone style Sikha. Yes. Fine, okay. Um, look, as I, I, I do want to say some serious words. Uh, so far, Baruch Hashem, it's been really... I've been invigorated. I, I found it to be... So far, it's been one to five days, and uh, the Zod Hashem... Uh, Coming days will also be just as nice. Um, what, I f- what I found it really uh, wonderful was two things. Um, maybe many, but you know, I can uh, at least deny. <coughs> Number one, I, I think, is uh, the, the intensity, the vitality, uh, the energy. Uh, and Baruch uh, Hashem, I think, you know, informal education often, often complements formal education. From uh, Machame complements Yeshiva. You should probably focus upon certain elements in Machana, you focus upon others, but I think it's an integrated whole in which you try basically love the tiny bang of the Chabe Emet. And we bang, you know, I said the word like this the word lev uh, in Tanakh often means Seichel. But Tanashem Machem, lev ladat, but it's nine nishma, lev ladat means. Uh, Lev is the origin of knowledge, usually in the Hebrew of Tanakh. Dat, okay, avicha, the obdeh. The word lev often appears in the same. And by the way, it's an afkmin and chatik. So that at Hashem alkecha v'chol levav v'cha v'chol nafshecha. Right, levavcha means your your knowledge, and nafshecha means your emotions. Presumably, take a look at today's parsha and the parsha. They talk about this extensively. Lev also means also the emotion, and Tanakh means both. And I think part of the Vat uh, Hashem Alkecha Bechol Levavecha means both in your intellectual knowledge and your Talmud Torah, and also in the more, in, in the more emotional parts. And uh, of course, the be- I hope in Yeshiva we have, in Yeshiva I don't mean Haaretz, I mean all Yeshiva. Uh, I think in Yeshiva we try to have not only intellectual knowledge, in Machane, it's not only emotional, it's also the Torah, that's what I've been doing here, or trying, or trying to do. But nevertheless, obviously the balance is different, and uh, the sense of uh, the energy and, and, and the vigor and, and the intensity uh, have been really inspiring. Um, the, um, and the second thing is, it's not enough to have energy. You can have energy, you know. You, you go to a soccer stadium, you go to, you, 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 you go to a football field, there's a huge amount of energy. The question is, energy for what? And uh, of course, the point here is energy from without a shed. And, and, you know, I think that my impression is, and my experience at least, I hope yours is, I, I assume yours as well, and all this energy is focused uh, in the broader sense of without a shed. Some of it is more direct, some of it is less direct. But the point really is, is that right, this energy is, the, is devoted and dedicated to another Hashem. And the point of the camp really is to bring people closer to another Hashem. And if not, you know, it, it's, uh, it, the reason for its existence uh, will be uh, decreased uh, considerably. Okay, all of this is fine and good. But I, I didn't come here to praise. I didn't come to, I was not, I don't think I was mandated with trying to get praise. And uh, nor, nor do I see myself doing that. I, I, do, I do feel the need to express it. I feel you know, it's uh, partially and <laughs> but mostly because I just wanted to convey my experiences to you. Uh, how, and plus, I've been asked by hundreds of different people, how did you like camp and how is it going? So now you don't have to ask anymore. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, but. Let, let, let me now, though, go a step further. As I said before, I think it's been inspiring. It's, you're having a inten- very intensive summer, very positive summer. It's only a summer. The question now is, what's vital? What happens next? What's the, what's the next step? Or let me put it differently. My father's Rebbe, or Putin, is Rebbe, Tzadik Mubracha. Putin used to say always that a young was a wonderful time. The trans- you have a deep religious experience. When Yom Tov is over, you don't say Yom Tov is over. You can't use that phrase. You say Yom Tov has been absorbed. That you take it, it's been absorbed through the fabric of your being, and now you go further with it. 
And this is a crucial question. You can't be over in 10 days. What will you take and what you absorb? Or there was, it has it just been a nice time? You had a great summer? A great summer because it was intense, it was full of energy, it was full of Hashem. But nevertheless, a great summer. And then you go back to your, you know, like, you go into the telephone booth, you emerge with your other clothing, and you, uh, and, and you go back to normal routine life, and, and camp has, you know, it's, it's been a nice experience and great, but then you, you move on. Or do you, what do you take with you? Rav Mital, as that Sal used to say always, when Tata Hebra, who left the yeshiva and went back to college, we say, we say to them, it's a Hasidic word. Kichum mi zimrat ha'aretz, right? Yosef, it's uh, the Yaakov tells Yehuda and, and his children when they go down to, to Egypt, kichum mi zimrat ha'aretz, right? And the pasuk is kichum mi zimrat ha'aretz nechaot v'lot v'tzari, meaning taking the produce of the land, take all kinds of delicacies to, to bribe the Egyptian ruler. But the Hasidut, of course, couldn't leave it at that. Hasidut said, kichum mi zimrat ha'aretz, taking the zemer, from the zemiro, from the ruach of the Aretz. You absorb the experiences. Take these, uh, take the zemer, take the music of camp, and pack it in your backpack, and take it with you further. You know, it's, take it back to your life, you know, take it with you to yeshiva, to school, uh, to college, wherever you're going. Take the zimrat Aretz and, and take it Furthermore, take with you throughout the rest of the year. Uh, I allow myself a, um, I have to use a an analogy, which I deliberate when I should use it. Uh, <laughs> to tell it to go to your heads. But uh, <laughs> uh, in the day of Shwanasre, Shwanasre, you stand, you be flashing. Shwanasre is and should be an important religious experience. But then what do you say at the end of Shwanasre? Sim shalom tovah v'rachachem v'chesed. The row, the last bracha, is the following. You would spend, you spend 17 brachot, or 18 uh, nowadays, talking to Kiddush Baruch Hu. Now you say, I'm about to take leave. I'm about to depart. I'm going to my, I'm going to my job. I'm going to college. I'm, I'm going to my daily routine. So you request that, he, that the experience of Shmonas may continue to accompany you throughout the day. Let the experience of now, the morning, of the tefillah, be an experience which accompanies me throughout the day. And um, this, I think, is your challenge. Try to take these experiences and absorb them and take them with you throughout the year. And now ask yourselves, um, what, um, how can I do that? How can I take this Zimrat Haaretz, how can I take these experiences and make them relevant throughout the year? Because one thing is certain, the circumstances and the atmosphere will be different. And they should be different. In formal education, can only work for an extent in certain circumstances. It cannot replace formal education. It should not. And the question now is, how do you take this energy and this ruach to uh, with you throughout the year? I will say, in a, uh, I'll say a word about that in a moment, or I'll comment what we're going to in a moment. But uh, prior to that, I think I think the answer is rooted to no small degree in asking yourselves. What motivated you so much during the summer? What made this a summer which uh, gives you so much koach and ruach? And uh, I can tell you this what I uh, have been observing. Uh, okay, it's a lot of energy, uh, but there's something else. I think, in fact, it's seven now, right? Uh, you have responsibility. There's, you basically say, I'm responsible towards the community. I'm responsible, I, I'm in a sense, the person responsible for transmitting values. I, am, I have to present the values that we believe in. Normally, you can you cut yourself slack because it's your not your job. I had a, I had a kid in the army. Uh, unfortunately, he's no like he's, he's very sick and only bracha. And he once observed to me that uh, he was my, my he was my mempe at the time. And he observed to me once that. Uh, 
the same thing when you're a pencil for Kate to Bugai. It's like, a, it's a serious uh, position, man. It's like this. The Fakeg yells at the soldiers who, when they, when, when they run, uh, when they exercise, they cut corners. Two weeks before, in the course of pain, that was what he was, when they were uh, when they were in the course and not uh, and not in the row, they would also cut. And of course, we're paying. You have half the people they are cutting corners and and, and, and trying to, to run less. Two weeks later, they were screaming, yelling at the people who the same thing they did two weeks before. What's the difference? So he called it mentalium chel chamich. In other words, the mentality not the person who's responsible. The person who's being dictated to. If you're, are you a student or are you the person in charge? The responsibility here makes a huge difference. Now, you're going back to school, I mean, you won't be in position of responsibility per se. But I think the challenge is make yourselves responsible. Responsible for two reasons, for, 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 two, for two things. Number one, for yourselves, for your souls. Because you, have a, you can't live life twice. Make yourself responsible for your souls. Now, it's now responsible for 20 kids, so you take it seriously. To say that, but now, next, and, and next, and next month, you'll be responsible for your neshama. And that's a crucial thing. Take responsibility. Don't view it. Uh, view it view as responsibility. Charge as a man that you shall mind. Because, okay, I'll tell you so much, so I'll tell you about Shoel Neymar. Who Shoel, you take responsibility for your life. Number two, try to be, if, if possible, try to be, take responsibility for others if you have the opportunity. If you're in places where the leadership is needed, <coughs> not every place the leadership is always needed, but the main places it is. Or to put it differently, um, if you're often times you can step up to the plate of a Mako Ish, be an Ish. Let's take responsibility. <coughs> Not because you got a job and someone told you this is your job description. Do it because you're told. My father loved to tell the story that Rabbi Sachs told uh, how he went to meet the Lubavitcher Rebbe uh, in uh, 1969 or whatever. And he was a young uh, college student. And the Rebbe said to him, like, where are you? He said, I'm someplace in England. Uh, and the Rebbe said to him, what are you doing to further uh, Judaism where you are? And uh, Rabbi Sachs said to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, well, the circumstances that I'm under, whatever, and in the place I am, so I bet I can do it. Rabbi Stam said, the place you are, it's not where you are. You decide where you want to be, you decide what place you're in. You take charge. Don't be passive, you have to be proactive and, and take charge. So at the very least, take charge for your souls. Okay, and that's point number one. Let's take, there has to be a take -off. You have to take these experiences and make them into something which will be lasting. Something which will be part of your formative experiences. I say, I think um, responsibility is a major uh, element. Uh, energy, of course, uh, now the other element. The other element is, I said before, my impression and, uh, is that Baruch Hashem, the base, of, it's clear over here, what is it called Ikar and what's Tafel? What's the primary meaning of Adat Hashem? And there are other things, that there are many other things you do and uh, which are important. But first and foremost, Adat Hashem is, at the, is the focus. You're going back to um, modern Orthodox society, the design of society, some kind of mix of, of the two. And um, that thing created, you know, that's a challenge. And uh, you, you allow me now two minutes, uh, <coughs> two minutes is my fault. You allow me two minutes to, to say something about, uh, about modern orthodoxy and religious Zionism. Modern orthodoxy attempts to combine two elements. Right? Because at, at the end of the day, we call it modern orthodoxy, what we really mean though is an attempt to combine the Mudei Kodesh, the Mudei Chol, the general world, uh, and the more specifically Jewish world, that creates a dilemma. You have a dual identity, you're in a, there's, a, there's an inherent dilemma. If you're not modern Orthodox, if you're Orthodox and not modern, if you're religious and not Zionist, 
is no dilemma. Right? You, have, you chose one value, you chose one identity, and that's clearly what your identity is, what your value is. And therefore you work to achieve that. And kola kavo. But if you choose a dual identity, you want to buy the two worlds, here is an inherent dilemma, which is prime, and which, what's your identity? Or to put it differently, you can, if you said modern orthodox, and what's more modern here, it doesn't really mean modern, it means that you buy to the general world and the world around <coughs> you, you have to ask yourself a basic question. And the reason I mentioned this, uh, the reason I focus upon this is because my impression is, is it's not, the answer is not always clear to many people in the community, as I will try to explain. You have to ask yourself, is your avodat Hashem your basic identity, which is now enhanced by having additional elements added to it, or not? Or, and I, 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 I'll say the, uh, in the, the following then. Avodat uh, Hashem, <coughs> do we view it as something important which animates us, which makes us feel um, this is the important thing in life. These are, this is our basic value system. And, um, and we integrate into this many other elements, which we believe can contribute. Science, knowledge, literature, uh, whatever. Uh, we integrate this into a, a, a world which is focused on Vata Hashem. Or we set ourselves the following. I'm from, I'm orthodox. <coughs> what does that mean? It means I take a lacha on the sort of signposts. Right? I view them as regulations. I'll explain myself. Take traffic laws. I try to obey them, but I don't view them as my identity. In other words, if I want society to be organized, you have to follow the rules when, when you're driving. If you don't, there'll be chaos, and, uh, and uh, no one will be anarchy, and no one will survive. So we accept traffic regulations as a necessary need. We accept taxes and you know municipal regulations as a need to regulate society, but we don't. At the end of the day, the best thing is that you know they, they don't uh, restrict you. They don't. Uh, it's not an identity. I don't get and say Baruch Hashem. I swear, the big zechut of stopping a stop sign. But I don't see as part of my identity that I obey the laws of the state of New York or Ohio, or whatever it is. Rather, I say it's a necessary. That's my behavior. That, that's all. Uh, I know a few people who, you know, after Gad Israel uh, was established, they really thought that you know, obeying traffic laws in Israel was a religious uh, experience. But uh, if you know Israeli drivers, not too many people like that. Uh, in the the Cholof and. Um, do you feel halacha like that? Do you, you say to yourself, that, what's, that halacha is also kind of traffic signs, meaning I have to wait six hours between meat and milk, and I can't, uh, you know, on Shabbat I'm restricted, and so on and so forth. But it's not a motivating, animating experience. It's rather, uh, we do it, we, we decide to be from, we, we run to modern Orthodox homes, so we accept the various restrictions in our lifestyle, but they don't create an identity. You're not animated by them. If you're doing that, so, um, you know, your religious life will be positive. Religion will be an annoyance, or at best, some kind of obstacle, or either an obstacle cause, or if not, something neutral. <coughs> That's not what you want. You know, I think the Machane is to get across a different message. The message is that without the Shem, the Shem revolves around. And now, and this is the crucial point, do you really buy into your, you should, what you should really take away from camp is this point. That without Hashem is the focus. And we integrate with this many, many things. And now let me explain why we integrate. If you have two elements, you can come and see, you can arrive at this for one or two reasons. You can arrive at a modern orthodox perspective. Could you say to yourself, look, I have to live in the modern world. I can't survive without popular culture. I can't survive without 
without gadgets, I can't survive without many other amenities, I can't survive without being part of popular culture. And therefore, now, you can be invited, you can do this with a kippah, without a kippah. Okay, I'll do it with a kippah. What you really care about is popular culture, and you arrive, in other words, you're orthodox, you're a modern orthodox, but this is your weakness. I can't survive without the movies, I can't survive without TV, I can't survive without, uh, I don't know, vacations or whatever. So I, so I remain from, but nevertheless, that's not my, or you can say something else. You can say something with the Rav said, what the Rambam said, and what many, many other important people said uh, throughout, and you don't have to be the Rav or the Rambam for this. I think they, they're the beacons who lead us, but you don't have to be them in order to achieve this. You say to yourself that knowledge enhances your without the share. Why do you want to go to college? Not because it's a debt to society, because you believe this knowledge will empower your without the share. The knowledge will make your without the share better by, um, by understanding the world around you through science by understanding the human nature through psychology, literature, uh, philosophy, whatever, you, are, you, have, you live a deeper life. You know, it's, the only reason to be modern orthodox is for this, is to be able to enhance your lives, to be able to enhance your religious lives. This, I think, in a nutshell, this is what I want from you. You finished a wonderful two months over here, the next 10 months are not a time out until the next session of camp in 2023. And the next 10 months are <coughs> time for you to continue to take the energy, to take the inspiration you've found over here, I hope, and to apply it. You know, don't leave it in Machsan over here and come back next year and pick it up. Take inspiration with you, apply it. Now you apply it to the settings, and therefore you can't. Don't try to don't try to copy this model. You know, in, 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 in other places, it doesn't work. Out. It doesn't work for reasons I think are valid and improper. It's not not everything that works over here in an isolated, uh, you know, loch in, uh, in Pennsylvania will work in, uh, in in other areas. But take the the principles, the ideas, and uh, use them. The energy, the vitality, the folks from the Hashem, the responsibility. <laughs> Take them with you and use them to have an integrated life. A lot of you integrated with your Avodat Hashem because I really think this is the problem of modern orthodoxy. Modern orthodoxy, you always have to ask yourself, am I in it for the right reasons? Am I in it to have a little bit integrated life? Or has a shalom, a non-integrated life, a life which, uh, that's a bit, which at best, you know, maximum, I said words like traffic regulations, at worst is a big tension which is even worse than this. So you have to ask yourselves, Ma'ani, you know, what am I doing here? Well, I said before, Kumi Zima Ta'aretz, and uh, put in your backpack all the good things you have over here and take them uh, and, and take them with you and uh, come back next year and they'll be able to improve the camp also. Shabbat <laughs>